Uno studio presentato qui a Londra al congresso europeo di cardiologia che prende il nome di TIT ha voluto confrontare tra di loro i due approcci, la somministrazione di routine invece con una somministrazione mirata quando i livelli del potassio scendono sotto i 4,5 mili equivalenti litro e noi ne parliamo con chi ha presentato questo studio, col professor Benjamin O'Brien. Professor O'Brien, first of all, which was the background of the study, the situation you have studied and the objective of the study? Thank you. The objective of the study was to evaluate and investigate the role that potassium supplementation plays in the prevention of AF after cardiac surgery. AF after cardiac surgery, AFAX, is the most common adverse event after cardiac surgery, affecting about one in three patients after cabbage surgery. And why you were thinking that potassium could be, potassium could be useful? So the way we were trained in the UK was that it is very important to keep the potassium at high normal levels after cardiac surgery, which means you have to give a lot of it to try and achieve the threshold of 4.5 milliequil of per litre in the serum levels. But when I spoke to colleagues from elsewhere in the world, it turns out they don't do it. And when I looked further into the evidence base for this practice, there wasn't any. So which patient uh, did you have studied and uh, w w which drug, which supplementation you have, uh, you have uh, done? So we randomized 1,690 patients after coronary artery bypass grafting in 23 centers from the UK and Germany. And half of them uh, were in the relaxed arm. The relaxed arm was our control arm in this case, uh, where we would only supplement potassium if the patients became hypokalemic, i.e. if their serum potassium levels dropped below 3.6. And in the tight arm, that was what we would consider standard practice in the UK at the moment, potassium was given every time the serum levels dropped below 4.5. And uh, which were the results, which was uh, the, the best options for the patients? So the headline results are uh, it does not prevent AFAX, so serum potassium suppl supplementation of serum potassium uh, does not prevent AFAX. Uh, there were four headline results really. Uh, the first one was that the overall AF rates were the same. If you looked at AF picked up by any means, the patients wore an ambulatory heart rhythm monitor in addition to standard monitoring. It was 33.1 versus 33.0% respectively. Importantly, there was no difference in dysrhythmic events other than AFAX, so no difference in VT or VF, or indeed in AF burden, so the practice was safe to not supplement. And a significant finding was the difference in cost, with a fourfold higher mean cost in the tight arm compared to the relaxed arm. So which kind of message could you provide to your colleague? So, to my mind, certainly for cabbage patients, the current widespread practice of supplementing potassium progressive, uh, aggressively, proactively should stop. We should only be giving potassium if the patient becomes hypokalemic. And I think that would also hold true for patients undergoing other types of cardiac surgical procedures, such as valve surgery. Our results, of course, cannot show that because we only recruited cabbage patients. But I think the burden of proof has changed. And if patients, or if caregivers want to continue giving potassium in valve surgery patients, they should do a study to prove that that is indeed uh, effective.